Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery today to talk about soils. So we're going to talk about some soils and how you can use these different soils. I know I see a lot of customers standing looking at our soil selection, scratching their head like, what am I going to use for my application here? There's so much to choose from. So I chose these products here to talk about today because they're fairly inexpensive, but they're really good quality stuff. They have good ingredients and I use these in my home as well. And so I'm not afraid to recommend them and I recommend them all the time. So I thought I would just kind of give you a rundown of the different soils that you can use for the different applications you might have in your garden. So um, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button and hit that subscribe button if you're not getting our, our videos on a regular basis and hit the bell so that you know when we're gonna send out another video. So, I'm gonna start with, there's kind of two different types of soils that you can use. One is a potting soil, the other one is a planter's mix. So the difference between the two is a potting soil is used for containers. So if you're gonna be planting in a container, you want to use a potting soil. If you're going to be planting in the ground, you want to use a planter's mix. So it kind of says it in the name of the product, potting soil for pots, planter's mix for planting. Now there are some planter's mix that can be used in containers and it should say it on the container, or on the container, on the bag. Um, or a potting soil can be used in the ground as well, although potting soils are a little bit more finer consistency, so they don't hold space in the soil like some of the, the like the planters mix do. And in a in soil in the ground, we want them to hold space in the soil, so that'll hold moisture and or oxygen depending upon you know if it, you just watered or as it's drying out. So it helps the soil to be loose and not so tight and compact. Now here in California, in this area, Southern California, we have clay soils. And clay soils, their particles are flat, so they lay on top of each other, and that hinders drainage. So the, plant, the planters mix will come in and put, there's some have pumice in them, which are volcanic pieces of rock that will hold space in the soil. And then we have like sh bark shavings. Um, and each, each uh, manufacturer of the soils uses different products in their soils, but they're all pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> so you're wanting to hold some space in the soil for oxygen and water retention or water drainage. Like I said, with our clay soil, sometimes the drainage is not so good. So, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna start off with the potting soils. This one here is Edna's Best Potting Soil. And we also carry this in a 1.5 cubic. And um, I like to use this one in my containers. So anything that you're potting in a container <coughs> that doesn't need extra drainage, say like, um, some of these other products I'll talk about actually address that drainage issue. So if it's like cactus or, or citrus and palms, sometimes they need to have a little bit, but not sometimes, they need to have better drainage in containers. So we have cactus mix. <clears throat> so <clears throat> for cactus or succulents, you would want to use this mix right here. Now sometimes I like to mix a little bit of potting soil in with my, my, my cactus mix because this is draining a little bit too quickly for me. I'm a kind of person that, um, they're lucky if they get water in my yard because I'm so busy. But if some people, they like to go out and water their plants on a daily basis, which is not always good, but that's kind of their therapy for the day. And if you kind of know that, you might want to have the full strength cactus mix so that you can water it a little bit more to make you kind of feel a little bit better. But for me, I, they, I need to have them to hold a little more water for me because I can't always get out into the yard as, quick, as often as I'd like to. So I do put a little bit of potting soil in with my cactus mix. Then we have here the potting soils, well, I'm sorry, the um, other planters mixes that I like to recommend. And these are things you can put in the soil. Now this one, the citrus palm mix, or the uh, azalea camellia mix, is one that you can use in pots. And anytime you have anything that's acidic, like camellias, azaleas, ferns, 
um, things that tend to be more shade loving or things that come from areas where it rains more um, like your uh, um, 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 uh, Japanese maples those are another one that, that that need more acid in their soil now acid is a pH thing so when uh, 7 is neutral, anything above 7 is alkaline, anything below 7 is acidic. So this helps with adding acidity to the soil. So sometimes I will put a little bit of potting soil in with my, my azalea camellia mix or my azalea camellia mix with my potting soil, depending upon how much I want to mix in there. If I'm doing, say, potting a gardenia, I might do half and half because I want a little more acidity in my soil. Um, so I also use this in the ground and I use this in the ground for everything whether it's acidic or not because our water and our soil are both high in alkalinity so every time you water sometimes you're giving it like a shot of eight on the alkalinity scale every time you water so by adding this to the soil that kind of helps to balance out that that alkalinity of our soil and our water so I do use the azalea camellia mix on a regular basis. Now the other things that we have that I'm showing today is our citrus palm mix. Now this here is used for citrus and palm. Anything that is not a succulent or a cactus but wants to drain a little bit more, say like your California natives if you're putting those in pots, or things that are drought tolerant type plants like um, lantanas, um, grevilleas, things like that. Those would benefit from using this and this can also be used in, a in the pots as well as the ground. So if you're planting your citrus or palms in the ground, this is what you're going to use. All of these planters mix, you usually do about 50-50 mix between your native soil and your planting mix. Now, the reason we do that is because we want the plants to get used to growing out into the native soil. So if you just put a, a, a make, you dig your hole a little bit, same depth, a little bit wider, that soil you take out of the hole is what you're going to mix 50-50 with your planting mix. And then that back, that mixture is what you use to backfill around the base of the plant. But if you use all the planting mix, the plant's gonna go, oh, well, when I get to the edge there, ew, that soil is kinda icky, so I don't wanna go into that soil. I'm gonna stay in this soil right here because it's nice and, it's nice and yummy and, and loose. But if we mix a little bit of the, the ground soil in there, our native soil, what happens is they're not quite sure if they've gotten to the edge and now they'll be more apt to reach out into our native soil, which is what we wanted to do. This is just to get it started. And then after that, you can do a top dressing throughout the, like every year, once a year, you can put a little top dressing on here to kind of help rejuvenate that soil. Now, another thing that I like to recommend is their EV Stone planting compost. And this one is just what it is. It's a planting compost. So it's for your, your things, your regular things that don't need anything special. You can use this, like bedding plants, things like that, um, geraniums, uh, things that are just real simple to use or to, to grow. Um, and it's, like I said, fairly inexpensive. And it's got really good ingredients in it. So um, I like to recommend this for anything that's just a general purpose. And then also we have the rose and flower mix, BB Stone rose and flower mix. And this is for what it says, roses and flowers. So all of these mixes here that go into the soil, you can interchange them, but keeping in mind, if it needs extra drainage, the citrus palm is a good one. If it needs to be more acidic, the azalea camellia is a good one. Now. Let's say you got one of these bags in the thing and you don't want to go buy, go down and buy another one. That's cool, I get it. As long as it's not a cactus or something that needs good drainage, you can use any one of these products and they're gonna do the job. So, I hope this was helpful to you. Again, remember if you liked it, kick, click that like button and check us out again for any other videos that we might have coming down the line. Thank you and have a great day.